time because we're a little bit ahead of schedule and we have the opportunity to hear from a candidate for U.S. Senate. So without further ado, Chris Dahlberg is going to come up and speak for a couple minutes. And you've got time for three questions. What's your requirement to speak to the team right here? Uh, thanks, Jake. I, I really appreciate it. It's, it's a great group, and I really enjoy uh, being here. Um, up in uh, Duluth, Minnesota, we have what's called the Northern Liberty Alliance. And one of the things, though, I'm really glad about is that uh, one of our organizers up there is Becky Hall. And Becky, a lot of times, dresses as, as Martha Washington. And I'm sure glad that uh, Jake and Jack are not uh, dressed as Martha Washington. Oh, <laughs> It's really, a, it's yeah, not tonight somebody said, okay. <laughs> it's, it's great being here, and um, I wanted to tell you quickly a little bit about myself. Is, uh, right now I'm the chair of the St. Louis County Board. I'm a strong fiscal conservative and a social conservative, and yes, you can have them in, in northeastern Minnesota, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. Um, I, I was the last, actually, to enter the race for U.S. Senate, and there's a reason why, is because I retired from the military, after 25 years in the United States Army Reserve, so it was October 1st. Thank you. And uh, along the way, one deployment to, uh, to Iraq, 2004-2005, my daughter at the time was uh, uh, three months uh, when I left at that time. I'm, I'm pleased too, the race is going well, I just, uh, you know, whatever you can place the, your faith in polls, but public pol poly, uh, polling policy, public policy polling, came out with a poll recently on the U.S. Senate race, and they're out of Raleigh, North Carolina, but now, granted, I've only been in for one month. The other candidates have been in since the summer, and showed that I was the closest candidate up against Al Franken for next next year. And they showed me within ten points. And I want to talk why it's important because it's important to have a person that shares your values here, but you also want to have a person that not only shares your values but can get elected. You know, I really like the message, and Jake, you gave me a little hard time. He said we're going to talk about uh, the state. Uh, you know, the legislature and not the U.S. Senate, but I think he's right on. Because our best chance is really it's local government. That's why I'm running. And, uh, and, and the issue is, is that we need to take back the power from Washington, D.C., because they're not going to do it themselves. And that's why I want to go there. And I want to come back here. You don't send a congressman to Washington, D.C. to become a U.S. Senator. I think, you know, some people say, why? You're running from all the way from a county commissioner up there. I get it. I'm boots on the ground. And we need to, the best government is government closest to the people. Yeah. And Jeff Johnson was here tonight too, and we're fellow county commissioners. And you know the thing about local government? If we make what I call a bonehead decision, you throw us out. Because we're close to the wisdom of the people. Like Lincoln said, government of the people, by the people, for the people. You know, we have a legislator here too tonight. We have legislators and senators, and we kind of kid about this. But sometimes legislators and county commissioners, we fight a lot. I mean, we get this friction going on between it. But you know what? We fight like brothers and sisters. And you know what brothers and sisters are? They're family. And so that's the difference, because we're a fam Minnesota family, and we can get it right through the help of the citizens. But you know, we are family as far as when the decisions are made in Washington, D.C. So on issues such as health care, on education, why should, you know who's driving the bus? It's California, New York. You know, we only send 10 representatives to Washington, D.C. We send eight congresspersons and two U.S. senators, so there's 10. 435 in the Congress, 100 in the U.S. Senate. So we have 10 sitting at the table, and they're making the decisions on health care, and that's where we got health care. So Mr. Franken gave us health care. He was the deciding vote on this. You know, one of the things a physician said, the first, the first principle should be do no evil. And here's a senator, he went to Washington, D.C., and he actually was killing our medical device industry, killing jobs in this state. So either he didn't read the bill, or he read the bill knowing that the medical device tax was going to do that, and he didn't care. So that's really troubling. So what I want to work about is we heard here, Gabby was up here today earlier, I have a nine-year-old daughter. And you hear a lot about stewardship. And I really love this group because this is stewardship, because I'm 51. And I remember when I got excited about civics when I was 16 years old. And we don't have the country that we had back when I was growing up. And we have to think, what is the stewardship that we're leaving? What kind of freedoms are we leaving Gabby and my nine-year-old daughter? Are we giving them the equal opportunity that they had uh, you know, when we were kids? Because this world has really changed the last years and they've not gone in the right direction. Real quickly, just a couple things. The other question is, somebody came up to me and said, 
Well, I hope if you get uh, into Washington, D.C., you don't change, because we have so many there. And I think you, Jake, you got an excellent thing about there, how they did something, and he's right on point. He said, I tell you what, if, if, here's something. If you want to know, if you want to have a fiscal conservative that's proven that they can stand up to pressure and can win in the toughest conditions, you get them from northeastern Minnesota in the bluest of blue districts, as blue as Minneapolis and as blue as St. Paul. And one of the things, you can call the Tea Party members up there and ask them about Delbert. And one of the things is, I don't blink. And I know with a lot of the U.S. Senate candidates, you're going to have to weigh them. But one of the things that happens, that right now everybody's talking, I'm, I'm for one man, one woman, I've taken that vote. A lot of times you'll find they'll say, oh yeah, I was for one man, one woman, it's between a man and a wife. But all of a sudden you say, well that was in committee, I had to vote that way, or I had to table this, or I had to do this, or these gun rights, you know. And that, it was a different time, That's, it's just the circumstances. And so you have to say, find the person, find the man, find the woman who's been tested in the toughest conditions. And I'll give you a, you know, and, and, and the other thing I want to tell you about is we can reach out to the people. We, we can't win by only putting the traditional Republicans forward that only win in Republican areas. We need to win the Reagan Democrats. And the Reagan Democrats are in my district. And I'll tell you one of the things where they were slapping me on the back afterwards and saying, way to go, and I was a six to one vote. And that's where you get these political pressures. We have in Duluth, Minnesota, what's called a wet house. Has anybody ever heard of a wet house? A wet house is where people can go and they're allowed to be given free room and board all day so they can drink. And the idea is this is a good model. And I said, in the words of Bob Dylan, the times are changing. Because it used to be at one time that if a man or woman worked all day, they would expect the roof over their head and three square meals. But now today, so down the road somewhere, it changed. And it said, you know, a man or woman doesn't have to work all day but they still have that right to a roof over their head and three square meals. And I said, now today you're telling me that they deserve a roof over their head and three square meals, and you're telling me they should be able to drink all day. Now I know that's progressive thinking, but I said, I can't get behind this. And I was a six to one vote, we even had other conservatives on the board, I was disappointed. But you know, they say, come on, we have to lighten up, come on. And we have, but we have to have leaders that can stand up to this. And I finally wanted to finish and say, we need it, we can beat Al Franken. And the way you do it is you gotta connect with the blue collar hard work and Democrats out there because we gotta get them. And I'll tell you what, the Tea Party's been demonized. You are no different than the blue collar Democrats in my district in northeastern Minnesota. These are guys and gals, a lot of them have fought a war, they fought for freedom, they've worked all their life, and now they're sitting back and they're watching people riding on the wagon when they should be pulling the cart. And so uh, with that, I remember when we go forward, the important thing is you want to have a person that shares your values and also a person that can get elected and beat Al Franken, and it's possible in 2014. Thanks so much, Jake. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Okay, uh, three questions for uh, Chris Goldberg. Three questions. A show of hands. Any questions? Okay, I'll ask one. What does shall not be in French mean? It's basically you can't put all kinds of restrictions on it. I think we, we, where we are right now is just don't uh, no more re regulations on guns. I like that answer. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a question. On the continuum of uh, Republican representation in Washington, from Mitch McConnell to Mike Lee and Ted Cruz, where would you land? Yeah, great question, and that's not the first time I've been asked that. I've been asked about uh, ten or twelve times, and, I, and I'll be consistent with this. And I'm not going to try to sidestep this. I'll tell you two things on this, because maybe it's what you're trying to want to hear, is that I don't want to compare myself to any representative. And the reason why is if I say I'm like Ted Cruz, or if I'm saying I'm like somebody else, you're going to say, yeah, but what about this issue? And that might be the one I disagree, because there's always different ones. But I'll tell you, they're one of the things I think people are asking about is what about the government shutdown? And, and, and the issue there is what about going right to the edge? And my message is some things are worth fighting for. Some things are taking that stand today, and, and we might lose that battle. But then, you know, when are we going to take a stand? That's the issue on the government shutdown. So you're looked as unreasonable, but, you, but you, have, you have to realize we have Obamacare coming down the pike. It's going to be one-sixth of our national economy. We already have a $17 trillion debt. So are we going to be told then as Republicans, and I'm running as a Republican, to lighten up Francis? It's really not that big of an issue. Let's just kick the can down the road a little longer. 
and I think that's the wrong. So does that kind of answer your, I think that's what you're trying to get at. And I, I, I don't mean to be a sidestep, but it, I, it's just too hard to say, I'm gonna be like this person, I'm gonna be like Reagan or whatever, because there might be something, one vote that I disagree with them on. But you'll, you'll hear more and more, you, I'm gonna be like Chris Dahlberg. And that's what, what I say is, is, is where I'm gonna go. One last question. Show a hand, right there, Nick Karen. Uh, will you abide by the Republican Party endorsement? Yeah, that's a great question I've been asked many times. And, and what I'm doing is, I want, I'm fighting for it, but the problem I have right now, and you guys can come and lobby me afterwards all, all the time, but everybody else is saying I want the endorsement, but by the way, I'm gonna go to the primary no matter what. And so I can tell you tonight that I'm gonna abide by the endorsement and I would be the only person and I, I feel like I'd be having one hand tied behind my back. And so I've been uh, involved in the process since I was 16 years old. I've been to conventions till uh, 15th vote in the middle of the night and I, you know, I appreciate the process. Uh, but I, I don't feel that at this point there's, there's other major contenders and nobody's willing to say let's abide by the process. I'd say let's all work on them and let's get them by the end of the year. Let's get everybody to say hey, let's abide by the process. Okay. Uh, sorry if that doesn't answer quite what you want. I know it's sidestepping a little on that. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. All right. Uh